the best TV shows of 2020, so far. So much to watch, so little time. With new streaming services launching seemingly every week and endless waves of programming to consider, figuring out what to watch next should be a difficult task. But it's a breeze for you, because you've bookmarked this running list of the very best TV shows of 2020, a ranking I'll be updating regularly all year. Just like in 2018 and 2019, I'm singling out the year's best TV shows and ranking them all so you'll know what to prioritize. Please note, I'm only considering scripted episodic shows and miniseries here, so you won't find any docuseries, like Netflix's Tiger King. Here is the list of top 13 most watched TV shows. Number 13. Star Trek, Picard, CBS All Access. Season 1, 10 episodes. The number of times I said T. Earl Grey. Hot, while waiting for this series focused on the continuing adventures of Patrick Stewart's Captain Jean-Luc Picard is at least as high as the number of Star Trek movies. The 10 episodes in season 1 don't reinvent the Star Trek wheel by any stretch of the imagination, but Picard, which sends us along with the retired Enterprise captain in full-on, one last mission, mode on a quest to save Data's daughter from scheming Romulans, hits all the right nostalgic notes while also forging its own path. Number 12. Aquafina is Nora from Queen's Comedy Central. Season 1, 10 episodes. Hey, look, it's Nora from Queen's, aka Crazy Rich Asians scene stealer and the farewell star Aquafina, in a Comedy Central show in the vein of Broad City. Number 11. Dead to Me, Netflix. Season 2, 10 episodes. The second season of Dead to Me, one of those rare plot-driven, half-hour comedies you can't resist binging in a single sitting, retains the breezy, twisty quality that made season 1 so popular but explores even darker territory as it asks, what happens when two wine-swilling suburban women cover up a murder and discover the lies they've been telling each other. Series creator Liz Feldman serves up outlandish plot surprises galore for Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini's frenemy characters to contend with seriously, so many twists. But the Emmy-nominated LED's chemistry makes it all work. Netflix announced in July that the show will wrap up with season 3, likely arriving in 2021. Number 10. The Plot Against America, HBO. Miniseries, six episodes. David Simon and co-creator Ed Burns adapt Philip Roth's novel that imagines a what-if scenario that directly addresses the America of the past four years, what's the worst that could happen if a populist candidate somehow won the presidential election. In the short, well-written but sometimes too on the nose menisery's case, the worst case is a Nazi sympathizer altering the course of World War II and the safety of millions of Jewish families. Number 9. What We Do in the Shadows, FX. Season 2, 10 episodes. Season 1 of This Vampires in Staten Island mockumentary walked so season 2 could sprint like a werewolf in the night. The episodes are one hit after the next. Charting the vampire housemates, Nadia, Natasia Dimitriou, Nander, Kayvan Novak, Laszlo, Matt Berry, and Colin Robinson, Mark Proche, Fear of Ghosts and Distrust of Witches, Chain Email Paranoia, Guillermo, Harvey Guillen, The Familiar's Secret Van Helsing Spree, a musical reverie incited by Come On Eileen, and a particular not-to-be-missed episode guest starring Mark Hamill that has Laszlo on the lam as a town's resident high school volleyball enthusiast. Number 8. Devs, FX on Hulu. Limited series, 8 episodes. If you love a good yarn involving quantum theory, murder, and Nick Offerman in a villainous beard, do I have a show for you. Alex Garland's moody, visually stunning techno thriller is that show. Number 7. Curb Your Enthusiasm, HBO. Season 10, 10 episodes. 
has it really been 20 plus years since Curve Your Enthusiasm made its stealth brilliant debut as a mockumentary about Larry David's post-Seinfeld attempt to revive his stand-up career? Yes, and, ever since, I have thought about the 1999 special that led to the show's episodic debut a year later, for the scene where Larry calls an exec and says that he was an executive producer on Seinfeld and the guy replies, never watch it, not a fan, which is so applicable in everyday life. Anyway, the show's come a long way over two decades and ten seasons, but it's still exactly what you need it to be, and funnier, at minimum, than season nine, and probably a few other seasons as well. You'll laugh, especially at the season-long arc about Larry's, Spite Store, Coffee Shop, Latte Larry's, unless you're one of those, never watch it, not a fan. Number 6. The Queen's Gambit, Netflix. Miniseries, six episodes. The runaway popularity of The Queen's Gambit, a show about a young girl who gets really good at playing chess against a bunch of boys, is only surprising if you haven't already seen it. Netflix's miniseries, adapted from Walter T. 1983 novel of the same name, is a dark, sexy, intense exploration of the minds of obsessives, addicts, and strategic geniuses, as well as a fascinating foray into the cutthroat world of 20th century professional chess. The journey of Beth Harmon, Anya Taylor-Joy, from precocious orphan to world-famous master of her craft is as exhilarating as it is, at times, deeply tragic, turning an unflinching eye on what happens when nurturing a childhood talent becomes feeding an endless desire to win at all costs. Number 5. Ozark, Netflix. Season 3, 10 episodes. After two seasons being subjected to relentless pressure from various entities, the birds somehow fall even further into the Missouri sludge. This time around, they, barely, avoid death by cartel hit. Season 3 ups the ante significantly over the uneven second season, and has set things up nicely for the fourth and final season. Number 4. The Mandalorian, Disney Plus. Season 2, 8 episodes. In its second season, The Mandalorian has hit its stride, again proving itself to be one of the most purely enjoyable shows on television. Having accepted the mantle of transporting Grogu, nay the child, aka Baby Yoda, back to his own people, whoever and wherever they may be, Mondo's mission is clearer, his allies are more colorful, and the line between good and evil gets blurrier with every episode. The show retains the brisk, planet-hopping flavor of season 1 while delving a little deeper into Star Wars lore, but never so deep that it gets too bogged down in its own mythology. An exciting array of guest stars, surprise character appearances, and delightfully crafted aliens two words, frog lady keep things fresh while still retaining that essential Star Wars spark. Number 3. Search Party, HBO Max. Season 3, 10 episodes. The high wire act of Search Party continued as the comedy mystery series hopped from TBS to HBO Max, with a brilliantly hilarious third season that put its Brooklyn hipsters on trial. With Alia Shawkat's disaffected Dory Seif and her exasperated former boyfriend Drew Gardner, John Reynolds being tried for the season 1 murder of Keith Powell, Ron Livingston, Search Party ratchets up its absurdity, while also transforming its heroine into a legitimate sociopath. Incredible guest turns from Shalita Grant, as Dora's unorthodox lawyer, and Louis Anderson, as Drew's jaded attorney, add to the fun. Season 4 is set to debut in January 2021, so Happy New Year in advance. Number 2. Better Call Saul, AMC. Season 5, 10 episodes. It's quite sad that we're coming to the end of Better Call Saul and the Saul Goodman saga. When AMC wraps up Vince Gilligan and Peter Gold's highly regarded but weirdly underrated prequel to Breaking Bad after season 6, it'll create a Bob Odenkirk-shaped hole in our hearts, unless Gilligan, Gould and AMC have a secret plan to follow it up a Saul Goodman sequel series that dives further into his Cinnabon years. Unlikely. 
For now, we'll have to make do with the best written drama on TV, which, in season 5, focuses on Jimmy McGill's continued transformation into his slicker persona in the wake of Chuck's death and its negative effect on Kim Wexler, Rhea Seahorn, and start placing wagers on how the series will all end. Number 1. I May Destroy You, HBO. Limited series, 12 episodes. Michaela Cole's astounding series defies all expectations. What seems like it might at first be centered around the mystery of who attacked her character Arabella during a drunken night out transforms the more you watch into an intimate, expressionistic, often devastating character study of a woman trying to reconcile her trauma with the hard partying person she was prior to the incident. Based on an experience that happened to Cole herself, I May Destroy You follows no reliable structure, constantly playing with the concepts of time and memory as it unravels its narratives, all culminating in a striking finale that leaves you questioning the very nature of what a satisfactory conclusion to a story as layered as this one could even be. Thanks for watching. Subscribe our channel for more interesting videos.